Mm -hmm. Operations to order. Um, we have one item on the today, um, and the goal here is to um, either make a recommendation to the board for the 23rd. Um, and we have a couple options um, that we can choose from today. So we did have anyone sign up, but we have a couple people here who wants to um, make a public comment. And so, Jonathan, how are you doing? Jonathan Garcia. She was up. Oh no! I asked for him. Yes, though, right? You know, you were ready. That's not, that's not what I was asking. Though. The question was, what was your favorite flavor of ice cream? It was Jonathan Garcia. So I'm just wanting to know where we can get it. Garcia so, ice cream, right? Yeah. No, I was going to ask if we can move over that way. That onto that seat over there. Oh, so I'm going to get the guy, the people with public yes, comments over there. Yes. Or up there, anywhere, here, anywhere over here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but ready to be ready though. <laughs> so with that, we are going to do introductions. <laughs> Sorry. We are going to do introductions, and we'll start over here to my right. Uh, Frank Abdullah, communications. Thank you, Frank. Kara Bradford, executive assistant. Paul board manager. Darling Garcia, chief assistant. <laughs> Michelle DePass, board member. Gary Hollins, uh, chair and board member. Camille Identico, Innovation Studio. Dana White, Director for Planning and Real Estate. Dan Young, Chief Operating Officer. Kirsten Thumb, Real Estate Manager for PPS. Your name? I'm Esmeralda Caldera. Uh, Nathaniel Haynes. Curry Massanine, uh, Co Locate Design. Um, Michael Lahats. Okay. <laughs> Back at Cavell, more architecture and interiors design team for Jackson High School. Billy Shanks, representing Friends of Baseball. Uh, Gerald Bolden, representing Friends of Baseball. Monique Allen with ACMS Northwest, and we are a woman and minority owned civil engineering firm. Alexis Cummings, with ACMS. Uh, Scott Johnson, our project manager. Dave Gunderson, Hogs Lodge Foundation. Diana Horn, project manager, OSM. Keisha Locklear, project manager for Jefferson Modernization, OSM. Mary Festival, senior director, office of modernization. All right. Okay. So we do have some folks. How many people want to do a public comment? Just do two? Okay. So we guys just sit over here and then we can get you guys a public comment. And we're going to give each of you guys two minutes to speak. If I go over, I'm taking his two. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just uh, <laughs> change your name yep. and spell out your last name. Yep. And then after your last name, we will start the clock. All right. Uh, my name is Esmeralda Caldera, C-A-L-D-E-R-A. -E uh, I apologize for how I acted at the last meeting. I just wasn't expecting what happened. So I wrote this out so I don't get emotional. Um, as a Jefferson parent of four kids that have gone through the Portland public school system, alumni of Jefferson and homeowner neighbor, I was shocked to find out that we were blindsided with these two scenarios, proposals, the effects that it would have on the Jefferson modernization project. Portland public school board member Greg Hollins misspoke. Gary. What's your name? Gary. Gary. Oh, well, Gary. Gary Hollins misspoke to say Portland Public is responsible to relocate Cairo's charter school because of the vote by Portland Public Schools on December 18th of 2018 to lease Humboldt to Cairo's for three years with an option to renew for an additional two years. My source is the Portland Observer by Danny Peterson on 110-219. Portland Public School Board member Gary says Cairo serves this community, but we personally applied for our daughter who has an IEP, is black and Mexican, we live less than a block away, and were referred by the founder's husband, Billy, and we didn't get in. Our daughter was attending Beach Elementary. They failed her education terribly. She was anxious and coming home with upset stomach regularly after recess. I realized something was wrong. We asked the school to test her, and sure enough, she was dyslexic. We now have our daughter attending Holy Redeemer, because they are able to give her the interventions and extra help. In six months, she is reading. 
It's been beautiful to see her confident in her studies. Unfortunately, everyone is not able to send their kid to private school. We have a sophomore at Jefferson who is thriving in school and sports. My hope is that my daughter will have this experience so close to home in her community. Central Catholic is out of our budget. At the May 1st meeting, it was communicated that Cairo's charter had a 10-year lease with an option to extend for up to 50 years. That was a lie and a misrepresentation of the contract, which leads me to believe that Portland Public Schools cannot be trusted. The Jefferson High School modernization is completely separate from the Harriet Tubman Middle School relocation. You want to take over from there? You want me to, can I keep going and take his two minutes? Okay. That was a lie and a misrepresentation of the contract, which leads me to believe that Portland Public Schools or cannot be trusted. The Jefferson High School modernization is completely separate from the Harriet Tubman Middle School relocation and Cairo's charter school lease. Why is Kairos not being more willing to relocate if they know how much this site decision will affect Jefferson High School, the only school that has been asked to make accommodations to modernize? Now, after significant consideration, this is the Jefferson Minimization Project. We looked at three different seismic designs. I'm sure the fees were several hundred thousands of dollars that were paid by a bond to modernize the 1910 Jefferson High School, approved by the taxpayers. Money's earmarked for the 112-year-old high school, solely for Jefferson. The relocation of Harriet Tubman to the Humboldt site makes sense. At some point, considering making it a K-8 through school so kids can feed directly into high school. The athletic and dance programs are critical to the school. Without those programs, our kids would transfer to other schools that have <laughs> facilities to accommodate the different sports. We are already losing the tennis courts, no regulation track, no baseball, no softball fields, and we don't have a pool. Now you're suggesting in the current plan, which you're suggesting in the current plan, this is saying to our kids that Jefferson is not a priority. Don't, pri don't prioritize a charter school over our community high school. Maybe you can consider talking to Tony at SEI. That's a perfect fit for a charter school. If you want to privatize schools, just say that. This is, is this the direction of our Portland public? I will also be emailing Guadalupe and will sign up to speak at the Portland Public School meeting on May 23rd. Thank you. Excellent, thank, thank you. you. Here's a couple minutes. You want to say anything, baby? You want to second that? I think I just was piggybacking that same, that same. I mean, I went to Jefferson High School. I did auto mechanics there. I played football. I did track. I the the track is already a bit smaller. It's a bit small, but then to reduce it and take away the baseball field, take away the tennis courts, I just don't see how that's feasible. And it just I don't know. I I just don't see it. So and to prioritize. Uh, Kairos, which is uh, a different, it's not a part of the Portland Public School right now. Uh, why is that that we have to accommodate three schools in a place? Jefferson could take that whole area right now. Yep. So that's exactly. All. That should be scenario three. Thank you. All right, I'm, uh, my name is Gerald Bolden, uh, the director of baseball operations. Uh, Friends of Baseball is a nonprofit uh, organization. Um, and what I wanted to present to you all is the historical connotations of baseball, softball, the lack thereof uh, at Jefferson. Um, before, when Little Leagues, uh, there used to be Little Leagues, uh, Sportsman, Deer Park, Portsmouth, all those, <laughs> yeah, the ball, 11, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, Pierre Park, North Portland, the, uh, Interstate Little League had a Little League. Now North Portland Little League has taken a, a big portion of North Portland and Northeast Portland. <laughs> so there is uh, a gentrification factor here when it comes to Little Leagues and five to 12 year old boys and girls who are no longer in the neighborhood have got displaced from Little League. Not only, that's not important. The important part is the gentrification that kind of broke down the structure <laughs> that black folks had in North and Northeast Portland in terms of baseball, softball. So I wanted to bring that historical context in, as well as uh, the Negro Leagues. 
um, mm. once used to be. And our kids are missing out on that history. And Jackie Robinson did not die in vain for Jefferson not to have a, be a baseball softball field. Um, and so the mission at Friends of Baseball is to increase participation in a sport that has now priced us out of the game. So there's no black, in, base, in Major League Baseball, there is about less than 5% of uh, African American black born ball players in the league currently. And our mission at Friends of Baseball is to increase participation from a game that's priced us out. A glove costs $400, a bat costs $500, league fees, so from five to 12, when kids age out of Little League, there's nowhere for the 13 and 14 year olds to go unless you got $5,000 to, to pay to be on a club team. So I just wanted to put that on the record. Yes, we appreciate uh, it. Yep, and, and uh, please reach out to friendsofbaseball.org uh, for help or anything you, you can do to help support us. With this mission. What's so, your name? Sorry, I didn't get it. I was uh, Gerald Bolden. Gerald. Thank you. G -E -R -R. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as mentioned, Michael Stevenson, many hats. Um, <coughs> I love going last or left leaning because you can build on the stuff. And was heard granular, specific experience of folks who are have been at the school, who are living in that community, have students in that school, or organizing around that school. As I mentioned, I'm an artist, um, burgeoning historian. I'm not from Portland, though I'm doing what I can to be in this room and other things. Uh, so I figured I'd quote a little bit of history. Um, I was just at Tubman a second ago playing with my dog in the poison air. Um, and I learned that the Black United Front protested the school board meeting in which this event would occur so that the school would be in this site. What happened, for those of you who don't know, they stopped the meeting, they met behind closed doors, they decided to do it anyway, and now it's in this place, nice green fields, big old school, million dollar air filtration system, and now the school's moving again, right? And so we're currently in this situation where we're talking about, as mentioned, three schools, one parcel, bonds, crazy powerful stuff that it's still weird for me to be in multi-million dollar rooms talking about this, However, again, as a young person, I just am so actually physically ill with the level at which there are folks responsible for the nurturing of the future of our society, and we're talking about cutting the costs before the thing even happens. I don't know if there's anything else to say. If we lose ground before we gain ground, we have less than we started with, which is what's happening in this community, and even still, as we all know the history, I-5 was already detrimental to this, de debilitating, right? And so it's expanding and it's getting worse. And how can we as community agents and state employees and board members and all kinds of people who are supposed to be stewarding society forward, let this happen on our watch? Not for me. Check, I don't need that. Last second, millisecond, I don't need it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Good you. comments. Thanks. I was going to ask the same. You're right, but we've got it right here. It's, it's right here. All right, all right. So next we will hear from briefly. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dan John. Sure, I, th I think we'll go through very quick. And then we watch that briefly because he sent the, the the recommendation out to yeah. everyone, so hopefully everyone has read it, so that way we're not reading it all over. Again. Yeah, I'll I'll just hit the highlights, and I'll just I think I'll read what the okay. actual recommendation is. Obviously, the whole staff report. Um, so at our last facilities operation committee on April 12th, we reviewed the current Tubman relocation site option and the layout scenarios and due diligence volume six uh, highlights the pros of each scenario, including keeping Tubman within the existing boundary and encouraging collaboration between Kairos uh, and Tubman Middle School uh, and some cons as well, such as the tight site constraints, the costs and the impact at Jefferson High School. Uh, since our last meeting, staff have wrapped up community engagement efforts focused on these two scenarios. And I know community members or committee members uh, attended a spirited meeting at Jefferson last week. Uh, 
attached to the staff report are two documents I want to highlight. There is the relocation engagement summary, uh, as well as a letter of support for scenario one from Kairos PDX. So those are attached to the staff report <coughs> materials. Uh, and just to make sure that I'm not bearing the lead for everyone, I do want to just quickly read what the staff recommendation is in the staff report. Identifying the optimal, optimal site to relocate ter, uh, Tubman Middle School has been extremely challenging. Many sites have been considered with various pros and cons and eliminated from consideration. The option of co-locating Tubman and Kairos on the same or adjacent parcels creates unique opportunities. However, the trade-offs the trade required, including the lack of outdoor space, impact of Jefferson, Polacom, et cetera, are substantive. Due to the development risks, substantial costs, and academic and athletic deficiencies of both Scenario 1 and Scenario 2, and the community feedback received, staff recommends the district continue to search for alternative tub and relocation options. Inherent in this recommendation is the need to re-examine the criteria uh, used to assess the sites. Uh, staff proposes returning to the committee with revised criteria for the committee's consideration. Lastly, you know, staff does not make this recommendation lightly. We are keenly aware of the impacts of further delaying the decision to relocate Tubman. Uh, and it is because of our concerns and a large portion of these <coughs> concerns, especially the Jefferson community, that they are significant and we think additional work is needed to identify more viable options. This is a significant investment of roughly could be $200 million in a building that's around for 100 years. We think it's worth the effort to resolve it correctly. So I'll take any questions on that, and then uh, Camille is going to also provide an overview of the community feedback. But any questions before Camille does Why don't you just briefly outline the criteria that has been guiding because part of your recommendation is the review, I pull it up. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, let me, so I don't miss. I mean, just <clears throat> them, I can't. Yeah, yeah. So the we have, there are some guiding document or some you know some uh, uh, guiding statements that are in there as well, but also the criteria that we use to evaluate all the options were community considerations, location, site suitability, operational suitability, academic suitability and then cost considerations. No dis I thought no displacement was... Well, this is one of the guiding principles of not displacement. Say all your, the recommendation is around the criteria, but not the guiding principles. Right. I, I think both. The guiding... Necessarily everything, but... Well, the only, reason, all I, the only reason I say that is, I just absolutely clear we told the legislature mm -hmm. who gave us that before they gave us 120 million that there would be no displacement yeah and, that's, and so that couldn't be something that is re reopened yeah i think we'd consider those restricted funds based upon that it, it's a, it's in the memo it does it does talk about um that's number number one of one of the um, guiding the guiding guiding um, statements of guiding statements is number one is that there's no displacement of any uh, school feeder school I just want to make sure that as a condition of because that's the uh, the like, guiding the guiding principles are like a subset of the criteria and another one of the uh, I, I agree that um, a couple of the guiding principles came out of our commitments that we made to the legislature a couple of them did not but another one of our guiding principles is that um, any relocation would not affect the modernization program of Jefferson High School. That's important to note. Okay, Camille. I'll, I'll be brief. Um, the engagement, as I've said for several months, has intended to align to the engagement for the Center for Black Student Excellence because um, the communities that are most impacted <laughs> often have students at multiple of the schools that we're talking about, and we're centering the Black community, which has historically been left out of the conversation. And so for several months, I've talked about the alignment process. I've talked about the alignment of creating opportunity for um, the Black community in particular, but not exclusively, and that's exactly what we've done. So we've spoken to several groups and created a number of opportunities um, as it relates to the engagement. We've spoken to the Center for Black Student Excellence Guiding Coalition, which really is across 
uh, a representative body of multiple sites, multiple schools, multiple community members. Um, we've spoken to the Kairos Family Council. We've been at the Harriet Tubman Family Night, uh, Kairos Parent Teacher Conferences, the Jefferson Design Advisory Group. We launched a digital survey where we heard from alumni, faculty, staff, parents, caregivers, community members, and even homeowners in the area. We've spoken to principals, Harriet Tubman staff, and then all of the community members who joined us um, for one of our one of our last uh, kind of collective conversations. And truly, uh, I do have to be very clear that there isn't one dominant perspective um, on this issue. People favor various scenarios for different reasons, and also you have people who neither of the options work for them. <laughs> no. And so I just want to be really clear. Um, just some things to highlight about the process, and I'm happy if anyone has questions to, to speak to any of the narratives. We asked people about what they were most excited about, what they were most concerned about, proposed amendments to the guiding principles itself, things that they wanted us to add or to uh, shift and change. Uh, we asked people about if there were other sites that they wanted us to reconsider that were taken off the table. And we have received a number of uh, perspectives on this issue. The last thing that I do wanna say is that it has mattered in this process that I know predates me, um, as I understand it, this process has been more than a year, almost two, I don't know. I don't know how long the process has been. <laughs> but um, what we have seen pretty clearly um, in the community narrative is the entry, how the entry point to the conversation has shaped perspectives. Um, and so I'll say all that to say that there isn't a dominant narrative um, there are various things that people are excited about with these opportunities and also very much concerned about. So as a board, I certainly encourage you all to <laughs> attend to <laughs> things that people are raising, whichever direction. And if I may, Chair, uh, just to kind of conclude it and maybe turn it over to you all. Um, so as, as, as staff has recommended, you know, a, a desire to pause and reset. And when we say reset, we're really looking at uh, a 30 day timeline where we're able to re engage and communicate uh, four really old, real big things, right? One, how do we ensure that we're getting uh, valuable feedback, important feedback about what is the black community value, right? I think, especially given the intersectionality of, of the many projects that are in front of us, right? Whether it's the Center for Black Student Excellence. Jefferson uh, or Harriet Tubman. Uh, the interconnectivity is so crucial, particularly for the, the both the, the history and the future of our black community in Portland. And so being clear and, and engaging effectively is gonna be critical. Uh, secondly, I think uh, we also uh, need to communicate and be clear with all of our stakeholders what is still uh, in consideration. I think there are also, you know, while, um, you know, there are, there are community perspectives about uh, the use of the South Lot, and so wanting to make sure that as we move forward, there is clarity about what is being considered and what is not. And the last piece is, since we are going to reset and pause and reset, uh, we also want to aggressively look over the next 30 days at uh, reviewing additional sites. So obviously we've done incredible work. I think I, I uh, commend the team for th the work today around uh, uh, identifying site, possible site locations. We believe that there are additional sites for us to uh, further explore. Uh, and we want to uh, we want to be aggressive uh, over the next 30 days, both again from a community engagement standpoint, given that we have about a month before school is out and we really lose uh, the attention of a lot of folks uh, wanting to engage effectively communicate clearly and aggressively identify additional review uh, additional sites for us to review and consider yeah and I'm, uh, I'm gonna concur with uh, mr garcia you know i think you know and my thing would be i i do see value in the pause um, i do see value in you know 
a, a time uh, pause, you know. And I think we need to make sure that we're clear with everyone, the community and, and everyone when we're talking about the sites that we're looking at. Um, and so when we talk about a pause, we're, you know, my, from my perspective, we're talking about a pause on the terminal loca uh, relocation. We're talking about a pause on CBSC piece. And we're also talking about a pause on the Jefferson South Lot um, because those are all are in play. So I want to make sure we're clear that when we're talking about a pause, we're talking about, we want to make clear what we're pausing on and have a plan of how are we looking at uh, revisiting sites that we've looked at, potential new sites, um, and also to give clarity, right, uh, for the needs, values, and the focus on the collective community, not just a single community, not just Jeff community, not just Cairo community, not just Tubman community, but the collective community. You know, when I look at our community, when, you know, I, I've been born and raised here, you know, I have family who went to Boise, who went to King, who went to Jeff, who went to, you know, um, Irvington, like all the schools, you know, family who goes to Jeff, like Tubman, when us as a board are looking at a collective community, especially we're talking about the black community, and I want to make sure I'm very clear and conscious of what we're talking about, the black community and the harm that has happened to the black community, this is where our focus is at. Once again, this is not on one specific community. This is not just for Jeff, not just for Tubman, not just for Kairos, not and, and, and far as the C, uh, CBSE. We need to look at this collective, you know, holistically. We need to look at, you know, these are all of our kids. Whether you agree with them being at a charter school or whether you agree to be them at Tubman or Jeff, these are all of our kids who live in our communities, <laughs> right? Whether they drive in 30 minutes or whether, you know, they, they're across the street. Um, and so I think with our reset, and this is with my recommendation for our reset, that we need to make sure we're clear um, and concise on what we do. I need to make sure the district knows that we are clear and concise on how we want to go, how we want to move, um, and not take and not take all, all all the rest of the year to do it. So that's just my my thoughts. Um, so chair, on the pop. chair on. So I think you just, as an immediate next step, what we would do is by end of week send out a communication out, you know, pending this conversation to the Jefferson cluster uh, one, you know, outlining clearly what, you know, where we are, where, we're, where we stand. Um, I think that's going to be important to provide clarity. Yeah. Secondly, I think in that uh, working with Camille uh, to initiate a set of community engagement activity. Yeah. But, uh, no, no, me, but with that too, not just sending it out to the Jeff community, we need to send it out to our feeder communities. We need to send it out to our tummy community. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry, yeah. the Jefferson yeah. cluster. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So all, okay. all the elementary, middle, and high schools impact uh, that, you know, that matriculate through right. those, those schools. So just a, just a question, if, the, if there was a pause and you said including the Jefferson South lot, are you saying that that would mean that the board could move ahead with the Jefferson contract? No, no, I'm okay. not saying that. This, the main site this is what they're going to be working on anyway, right? So, well, they're tied. Well, I mean, we'll have to talk to the team. They're not independent sites. So, right. But I'm just saying a 30 day pause is not going to affect the master planning for the South Lot for doing a 30 day pause. Or will it? I don't well, know if that's a question. Like I don't know. I'm, I'm talking to you. Yeah. I don't know a hand. I mean, we have a very, Secures has a very, very tight schedule. And so I'll just, we'll just see now some conversations about our peer reading. We're in schematic design now. We're getting cost estimates now as well. And then we'll, you know, obviously move into further design for phase one and phase two and then get into permitting. So just, I don't know a hand. Mm -hmm. So can I, can I can ask you to review three days or six, or six months? I thought your recommendation is six months and you're talking about 30 days. I said 30 days. So I don't think that's six months. Pause. Is the staff recommendation six months? I didn't say six months. No. There's no time on here. No, yeah. I just had 30 days. Oh, 30 30 days. Pause. Right. And again, the idea is that in 30 days, we would come back with, hey, we reviewed these sites. We got further engagement. Uh, we were further aligning these all of these projects together, right? And in 30 days, maybe it's the next f &O committee in a month. We would come back and say, "This is where we are," uh, or "This is and this is what we're hearing," 
right? So it's really, I mean, if you don't want to call it a pause, it's giving us an additional 30 days to do further engagement and further analysis. And clarity. And clarity, yeah. I have a clarifying question, a couple questions. One is that there are like four demands for that lot, that south lot, one of them being Jefferson, but also the Center for Black Student Excellence, uh, Harriet Tubman Middle School, maybe Cairo. So there's four different, you know, buildings or, or, or programming for that lot. So that's, that's problematic. I'm really in favor of this pause. Um, I have a question about the criteria. So there was something in the memo that talks about reconsidering some of the criteria. I know cr cr the criteria about not being air quality wasn't part of the criteria, but is that something that we would consider? Like we want it, we're moving it because of the air quality and also because of you know, physical uh, location, but what are some of the other criteria we're looking at? That would be different from the list of criteria that we've already kind of gone through. Well, maybe, well, maybe I'll have Camille um... Can you speak to some of the initial feedback that we've gotten? Because I know that well, about additional. Well, well, let, me, let me try to see if I can answer a little bit. Okay. So I think when we're talking about the criteria, I think we're looking at what criteria will could grant us a more bigger space to look at for possible solutions. So, like as an example, if we argumented the catchment boundaries to maybe a wider scope, well, maybe that will give us a option to look a little bit further out for so in other words we'd look at the tubman catchment area right, well, right now yeah right now we're broad, broad a little bit broader, broader. There. so that's what we're talking okay, about as just far outside as, of right but that's just one of the examples of looking at the pieces that we could do to maybe broaden that out so that's what we're talking about yeah that's just an example it's, yeah no i think that is, that's a good those, example yeah. um i I'm, I'm just wondering so academic suitability is one of the things that the reason I'm very much in favor of this pause is we heard loud and clear that putting, uh, co-locating co um, Kairos and Tubman on this site would result in quite decreased academic opportunities. And so I'm in favor of not decreasing academic opportunities in this area and in fact increasing them. And that academic could also mean athletics and all of the things that go into having a well-rounded education. I get it. And that's one of the things Including that- Little League. Yeah. Because I'm a Little League I know, my kids are Little League too. Big. Yeah. It's so big. I think one of the things that we have to really remember, <laughs> uh, I think we have to, we, we have to remember in this urban setting, you know, and I want to make sure I'm clear on this, we don't always have the same space as other areas. Like when we have these comparisons, you know, we have comparisons to, to, to Lincoln. We don't have the same space as Lincoln, you know, unless we are taking out other houses. We just don't have the same space as Lincoln. When we talk about middle schools, we don't have the same space as Kellogg. So I think we need to be clear on what we're really looking at and what we're looking for. And I think when we're looking at um, some of those issues that we're looking at changing or revising or what have you, we need to be real clear on what that what that looks like. And I and so that's I'm gonna just say that. Are you meaning? No, I'm not talking. No, we're not, we're, not with, we're not having conversations with. We're not having conversations with the public right now. So, so I have a question. So the 30 days. Does that mean the criteria? Any revisions? Of the criteria would come back to us, and then there'll be a process, or would the criteria be revised and then recommendations come back? It's just. I don't. I don't. In front of this conversation, it seems like we've had exhaustive. Community yeah. engagement. So I'm just I'm trying to think. Yeah. What's going to be different that's going to get us to a different outcome? I think it's maybe less about less focus on the criteria and more focus on what is. We have an opportunity, I think, to look look again at additional opportunities uh, within the Albina community for us to further explore. We know that there are partners. Um, interested in supporting and helping us there. So, the, so to the extent that over the next 30 days gives us opportunity to, to, to do further analysis of sites, I think that's one. The second thing is we are going to do community engagement. Um, and, and really, again, I think the community engagement is to better lift up the collective value, the intersectional values of the black community as it, connect, as it intersects with all of these projects. 
Because what's, what's clear in our community engagement is that depending on where people entered the conversation, their, their, their views are, are shaped by that. And so to the extent that in the next 30 days, we can bring better alignment uh, in community, uh, particularly in our black community, because what we don't want to do inadvertently is pit the black community against each other, right? Itself, right? And so, uh, and 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 so, to the extent that uh, we can reset and say, you know, we need to do better. Uh, so I don't know. And so when I when when I think of a criteria, so you know, understanding that some of our guiding principles, like the displacement or the the desire to stay in the albino community, those are still values that we hold. But if, if it means looking beyond that one street that created the boundary, you know, to just on the other side of the boundary, I think we, we should have a little bit more create or flexibility there. Yeah. That doesn't mean that we're going to come back and say, here are the new criteria. It's going to say, hey, we identified potential four sites or two sites or three sites, right? And one of them just is right outside that boundary or... <laughs> X or Y or Z, right? And I think, and then having the board wrestle through that, I think, based on what the community feedback is that we're getting. Has the Center for Black Student Excellence Board weighed in? Because when we approved their governance um, document, one of the issues that they were going to provide guidance on was citing. Not that they were deciders, but they were going to provide. Um, yeah. So. Right, so yeah. So we have to talk with them and make sure, Latina, uh, make sure I'm, I'm saying it right. If I, if I get it wrong, let me know. But we did talk with them, and they are in favor of the pause as well. Okay. Um, and you know, they potentially, potentially might have some sites that we can look at as well. Um, so we, yeah, we have been in conference with them. Yeah. So I think yeah, we're we're definitely in alignment with the CBES or CBE board. Yeah. And so the. The thing that you're going to, the staff's going to come back with in six months is potentially. Oh, 30, 30 days. days. Sorry, 30 30 days. days. Sorry. You want to give me six oh, months. Sorry. In 30 days. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking about like, what's going to happen in 30 days. So what, what the deliverable back in 30 days is a more sites and, potentially. and potentially recommended changes in either criteria or guiding principles? Based on community engagement. I mean, Camille, I don't want to speak for you in terms of how you're thinking and, about yes. engagement. Yeah, I think it would be yes and yeah. everything. Yeah. And I was going to make sure it's clear that if, if we come back, and I just want to make sure I'm very clear and everybody understands, if it comes back to where these still are our only two options, as a, the board is going to have to just make a decision. Yeah. Period. We can't keep our kids hostage while. We try to make every <laughs> community happy. We're not going to make every community happy. We know we're not. It's not going to be something that every community is going to be, you know, in agreement with because every community has their own things that they value, and it's not always aligned with each other. So I want to make sure, as a board, we understand that, that we need to make sure that we are doing, and and hopefully the public understands that we are trying to do what's best for all of our kids. I'm going to go to Amy because she has her hand up. Thank you, Gary. I just wanted to say that it's a really good point that you made and um, also that we're not going to compromise our, tub our timeline for Tubman either. But um, we have reason to think that if we just revisit our, our criteria and apply maybe a little bit more creativity and innovation to the challenge, um, some new options might emerge for us. So I'm hopeful about that. But I agree with you that there is a possibility that we could do that and not come up with any better solid options and be back in this place and having to reconsider whether we can make it work. I just want to say that um, those options are both, again, compromising kids at the elementary, middle, and high school at every level. Um, if we're, if we're, reducing um, the, the size of the facilities for Jefferson, for Tubman, and for Kairos, we're, we're reducing the academic uh, offerings at every level uh, within this community. So that, that's concerning to me. And I, the other comment was that I hope that 
with our engagement that we do have a conversation with a broad swath of our community because it's not just one community, there's multiple communities um, about our values. Because I think if we start with our values, it's a conversation that can get us to some a sort of solution that's workable. Because we all do have different values and everybody's gonna be advocating for their own. But I think in community, when you have that conversation about what matters to you, that that's, that's a great way forward for these uh, types of uh, projects where there's some scarcity Great, great. All right. Any other questions from uh, board members? Mr. Green? Uh, so I, I want to say that I agree with the with the pause and seeing if we can maybe increase increase other things. Some like if we increase one lever, does it give us a return on another? and see what we can get out of this. I want us to, as we're being mindful, because uh, Michelle said something about our values. And I truly believe um, that if we lead with our values, um, that we can get somewhere. But I want us to also be mindful that culture eats value for breakfast every day. And if we're, if we're not paying attention to the, to the culture that has been set, and if we're not uh, making sure that we're addressing the culture that has been set, then the values oftentimes get lost in the process. And so I want us to make sure that we're we're pushing our values in the front by also acknowledging um, the current climate and the current culture. I want us to look for um, different opportunities that might give us a, a larger return and be be willing to be bold and be willing to um, let's 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 just look at things differently. And if we got to change some stuff, then let's be willing to change some stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the focus has to remain on we're doing this for the betterment of all the kids in the in the district, regardless of, of what school they attend. This is for all of our kids. It, it's not about the the alternatives. It's not about the charters. It's, it's about all of our kids because all these kids belong to us. And we're figuring out how to serve them. That's that's just my thought on that. So keep up the good work here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Clarifying question. Yes. When we say we're having a conversation about values in community, I just I want to be, be sure that I understand the assignment. PPS's values or the community's value, where 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 are we pulling the values from to say that this is what we're standing for? Are you asking me? I, I, no, in, no, my, no. in my mind, it's the community's values, not the district's values. Okay. I mean, it is a good question. I mean, the, the school district values, you know, maintenance and fidelity to the ed specs, which are very important. And I think the community's values are the ones that we need to kind of come together around what the community values. So you said a combination of both. I guess for me, I, when I look at it, like to, outside of the aspects piece, you know, the other values is education, right? So, which relates to the aspects. Yeah. Aspects. So it's a it's a, it's a matter of like in a facilities. But the aspects could be different because when you look at cities like New York or you know those high urban cities, those aspects are different. Doesn't mean they're not getting the education that they need or the other stuff that they need. You know? I think it's just, you know, how much square footage does each child need? Yeah. How to, if you want to offer a full offerings of career technical, you need a certain amount of square footage, you need a yeah. maker space. You know, it's a it's a guideline for us to follow if we want to, you know, um, develop world class 21st century buildings, no, you know, energy efficient buildings, you know, yeah. healthy air buildings. Yeah, right? Yes. Uh, on this question, I just want to add that, um, you know, as, when, as we revisit our criteria, we may want to revisit our ed specs, which are very rigid because they were created at a time when our enrollment projections were very different than they are now. So I'm just saying maybe that is a factor in this equation as well. I agree 100%. Could, could we also then staff revisit, so we had a presentation from the Center for uh, Population Demographics at Portland State that showed that there were two areas of the city that were anticipating high, higher population of high school students. 
And if, if it is, I wonder if that's changed. That was a projection, by the way, so projections can change. If, if in fact, there are, you know, are there fewer, is there fewer population high school age? I mean, maybe that's something we can look at. Yeah. If we're also looking at the ed specs, if it's still relevant to the population projections today, you know what I mean, that calculus. Yeah, I think that's something, like I said, when we look at if that, we're, that. If there's a 25% decrease yeah. in population, then does that justify? And their, their projections only go, I think, five or 10 years. So yeah. it's not a hundred year, you know, like we need to plan for. Gotcha. All right. Amy, you still got something to say or your hand is still up? Just left my hand up. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. So do anyone have any other questions, comments, concerns? Is that committed? Do I just have oh, one no. question? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Does it Hyrule's lease expire this coming up December? Was that it in my is that article we incorrect? We do, we do. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Okay. The the board voted to amend the lease in one. Ah, that. So. Yeah, the way he said it was accurate. That was accurate. And, and that was for 10 years. Correct. It's a, it was a 10-year extension in, in 2021. With, okay, so the 50 years was misspoken. How many renewals are they allowed to do? I think five. It's five. Five. So that would give us 50 years. 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 Yeah. But that's not saying it's 50 years. That's a that's renewal. renewal. Right. I'm going to say they have potential. It's a right. consideration. Yeah, it's not a guarantee, right? No. no. Like any other contract, you can't. Uh, we're going to let our, because I'm not sure the, the exact yeah, details. It is, it is an option to extend. Okay. It's there. So they, so yes. But not, not, what do you mean an option to extend? So it's up to them and the Hyros. Right. Hyros, as the tenant, has that option. So they could say, that will be here another 10 years or no, we're leaving. That's not up to them, not that. So the landlord doesn't have that option. That's the contract. You guys, who drew up that? Well, that in real estate contract, we leash, you each have an option that they don't. I know, but no. that, that, that should have been considered as actually. Is it in that location, or is it just that location? location? Yeah. I didn't know that. All right. I got a lot of homework cool. to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Just to clarify, in 30 days, we're going to be meeting again, or is it going yeah. back to the board? No, we'll be meeting meet? again in 30 days. Okay. Right now, we're going to take a motion to submit to the board the pause for the 23rd, and then we'll come back at the next. Is that 30 days the next board meeting? Is it 30 days out? Do we need to send it to the board? Well, it'll be after. We, no, we, have, a, we have a meeting next month. I can check the day out. Would you, Roughly would you like 30 days. Yeah. I think I, agree. I think I agree with Michelle. I don't think you need to, I don't really think you need to send it to the board. Yeah. But yes. the, what we could do is set up communications just so everybody oh, okay. informed after this meeting. So, uh, we have email. Cons, so we have consensus to do the third day pause. Mm -hmm. The next meeting is June 14th. Herman, Amy. I concur. Do you have questions? Anybody? You have five or six. Well. Yeah, but we're gonna do the committee members. That's true. And I don't. I keep forgetting who's committee. I'm not on it. Okay. I am. <laughs> All right. All right. So we got, I am, and I'm we good got with it. Consensus. Yeah, we got a consensus of the committee to and, go ahead and do a third. And I just want to make sure that it's clear that by Friday end of day we will send out a communication to the uh, Jefferson uh, cluster, uh, informing them of this latest update. Awesome. All right. Is, is got it one. possible? I'm sorry. Is it possible to send it out rather than just parents? Because who else send it to? Pardon? Who else send it to? What? Who else are you going to send it to? Well, I'm just thinking well, that a lot of community members. We have alumni, the DAG. I mean, it. Okay. Yeah, we'll be happy to post That's it. We'll work with the Jefferson community, uh, like alumni. We'll make sure yeah, the, that we have yeah. a broader reach. So yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to make sure we get a comprehensive list of folks, uh, community members to send it out to organizations, yeah. things like that. We have one last question. The scanner. Yeah, there you go. Observer. Um, I just, I was wondering, I didn't get a chance to look at the documents for the committee, so I apologize if they're there. I was just wondering if there's a list of the sites that are being reconsidered? Not yet. Okay, so within that 30 days, we'll be identifying the sites sure. and investigating. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks.
Okay, one last question. Thank you. Um, I did read the document, I think three or four times. In fact, today I went over and drove around Paris and I drove around the Dutch. I just looked at that and said, how could it possibly be that you could fit Tubman on that space? And I think you're on the right track. I think a pause is necessary. $120 million to build that building, and it wouldn't even really be the perfect building. It, it would be clunged. I, I really hope, and I think there are every, also all the schools that were listed, all the sites that were listed are PPS sites. When you're spending $120 million, maybe there's some other options to, and I don't, I hope this doesn't get too far out, but there may be some adjacent lands where we could acquire and do the right thing for everybody. Do the right thing for Jeff. Do the right thing for Tubman. And do the right thing for Kyler's. I think there's potential there. I'm going to devote, I hope I can, you know, spend the next 30 days doing that. But, <laughs> I, but we take all suggestions. I, I, I think there's a pony in there somewhere, and I have hope ideas, so. and I've communicated them to some of you, but let's go. Let's find let's find a, a, a I mean, solution. These kids all deserve a nice facility. And I just when I read that I just thought this this is boring. Um the other thing is we're gonna have our uh, Jefferson High Farmers Market at King Elementary <laughs> on Mother's Day. Awesome. The kids blew it away last week, so I hope they show up. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you for that. And like I said, we are looking for other recommendations. And if you know those that have looked at our six <laughs> what is it? Six volumes of due diligence reports, please look at that. You know, it's, it's, we, we have, if anybody wants it, we can Dan can get it to you. We have six volumes of sites that we looked at prior to this conversation um and then with all there are some uh public comments in that section as well so but we're looking for all and any recommendations um you know i get those notices all every month about you know we'd like to buy your house could we also <laughs> i mean like proactively ask property owners if if they'd be willing to sell we have. Yeah, I was going to the cash. Cash only. Cash only. Twenty-five sites that yeah. we've investigated. I mean, they're not for sale. So okay, yeah. you know. but but are, they're not for sale. Neither is my house. But right. it doesn't stop people from asking right. me and, to sell yeah, it we have, every uh, week. We have reached out. You keep on. Everything mm -hmm. needs to be thought of relative to that one hundred and twenty million dollars. Yeah. That's a big number. All right. Your, your facility. So. Okay. All right. So, any other questions, comments? If not, we're going to adjourn. Just no more. All right. So, as you all, um, I appreciate the camaraderie in the room, and I want to just emphasize that as we move forward with our engagement opportunities that we will create over the next thirty days, in the same way that we have done over the past <laughs> several months, <laughs> um, we will continue yes. to center the voices and the perspective of our black community members. You all are welcome. I just wanna make sure that everyone leaves this room understanding that we are doing the centering because our black community has been the most disenfranchised. I do have a suggestion. Yes. Um, that in that engagement that comes in the next 30 days that the project teams are engaged in how the uh, material is shared with the community. I think part of the issue that we that we ran into is that 
there was an actual explicit explanation presented in a presentation form to communities so that they can actually understand the full implications of choices. So I would like to partner with, um, you know, what will be in charge of creating the materials for engagement so that we can make sure that the messaging is as clear as possible for community. All right, that sounds, sounds awesome. While we're attacking on final statements. Uh, no, we're not attacking on final statements. Yeah. We're trying to go home. <laughs> well, I'll be quick. Um, Email it to me. Email it to me. I got it. We got to go. 30 days is not enough time. All right. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs> I'll be here all